Salutations. Let's talk about the moon. All right, the moon, specifically the dark side of the moon, and some of the qualities of the moon. Um, I talk about past life memories a lot. One that I have definitely was when I was a little kid. I kept looking up at the moon, saying, "Why aren't there two of them? There should be two moons." All right. I specifically have a memory of there being two moons on this planet. All right. Um, I always kind of thought about that and obsessed about that a little. Then around the age of, I'd say, 10, I got guided to a book called Someone Else is on the Moon. By, I believe it's Raymond Bernard. Um, Someone Else is on the Moon. And on there he talked about, in that book, uh, certain things look like tractors and certain craters that there seems to be a lot of activity and things that was being hidden by NASA. All right? So that's the first time I got kind of more turned on to that something else was with the moon more than what I was just seeing. All right? So then we'll go to the next thing that I came across, all right? Just a few years after that was some work by, um, I believe it was Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. He later on, I think, is now known as Osho. That's a whole other thing we can get into. <laughs> but he talked about, as some of the other gurus talked about, how we go back to the moon when we sleep. And also when we incarnate to the earth, how we come through a device on the dark side of the moon that they called the soul catcher, I do believe, all right? And the soul catcher is what we incarnate through and we go to and from the moon when we're sleeping. So that led me to another area there, which took me on into the work of Richard Hoagland, which came out a couple of years later. Everybody may be familiar with his book, Dark Mission, all right? He talked a lot about NASA, JPL, and what he called on the dark side of the moon, some of the pictures you've seen just before this video, which is called the Shard. All right, which stands, I believe, like a mile off the surface at a crystalline shard. He also talked about the palace, a palace-looking structure back there, and also what he calls the tower, all right? And the tower is really big, appears to be some type of a crystal city. Now, he's got pictures of that, and those are what you've just seen coming into this, all right? Now, <clears throat> let's take the shard, what the gurus also said about the soul catcher, and where the shard is present on the dark side of the moon, on the top of the shard what is what appears to me a star or a cube. I think that takes us into the cubes that is contained that can contain consciousness. All right. So we're dealing with the fact that, as my understanding, as we incarnate through this this soul catcher, this shard, it also nullifies our Nike, our natural psychic abilities, along with our soul memories. All right. Why so many of us, so many of us have these immortal souls that are devoid of soul life memories. I've always had a problem with that too, all right? Especially being born with some. So that's one thing we'll go into the technology of this also. What I understand about this soul catcher, this shard, it's in ruins as the moon doesn't have atmosphere, so it's getting meteor bombardment all the time, all right? And my understanding is also with the war that we're aware that's happened, that there's something wrong with it. Being that it has a problem taking souls and actually uh, containing consciousness of souls that die in water. Okay, that takes us to a whole nother level. So if someone had died in water, even a little bit of water is involved, uh, this soul catcher is unable to actually take them and recycle them in that way, all right? As we come in and out of it, we leave out of our bodies, all right? I think that's big, and I think that should be noted, all right? And also that right now it may be malfunctioning and also placing male and feminine energy into different bodies, meaning why some people may feel transgender. That's just up for debate only, all right? Um, the other thing would be um, when they talk about actually, um, I believe when the Maritimes, Mariners, when they would be lost at sea, all right? There are a lot of times they would be called, oh, they die at sea, they'd be called lost souls. I believe that's why. Let's take that and kind of correlate that to what I call and is known as the sleeping survivors, which are the souls that are supposed to be in the water, in the artesian well, underneath the Great Pyramid, all right? That takes something into that, all right? Which means that those souls would not have been able to process by the soul catcher, all right? Not to mention, we can kind of take this to the left a little, all right? And talk about David Pauletti's and his next, his last book, which is Pat, later than uh, Missing 411, but he's really focusing on water cases people that come up missing and then they're found in water with amounts of like GHB in their systems that are like 50 times what you get from a from a bar or something you know what I mean so these are just things I think to be really 
evaluated as far as this technology goes. All right. Um, I think that probably touches most of it. All right. God bless. Thank you. Oh, Kelly Coffey talks a lot about the moon. She's got some interesting views on it. Um, I recommend a couple of books that I put up here at the end. Ingo Swan is one. Penetration. That's a big book, and what he was one of the founders of remote viewing. He talks a lot about the moon in that book. Richard Hogan's book, Dark, Dark Mission, and also Someone Else is on the Moon. I'll flash those up, and I'll flash up the pictures of the shard, the palace, and the tower that's even bigger than the, than the shard on the dark side of the moon. That's also Richard Hoagland's work. So, this is just food for thought. Thank you.